Hello, everybody. There's a new transmission from heavy metal to the world and to, you know, Venus and Mars. We have found a way to, to reach the, those guys. <laughs> I, have, I have two very... There's a lot of guys out there. Two special very guests. Two oh special guests here. Uh, in the order that I'm seeing them, Homero Rios, comic book writer and TV writer also, who has done a lot of work in Mexico and some work in the American comic book market. Uh, he has worked for heavy metal since eight years ago, something like that. Yeah, and 11. 11 years? No, 2011 was my, my first publication with the, the magazine. Nine years. And TV and movie actor, Rising Star, not Rising Star, but that sounds cool, Rising Star, Horacio Garcia Rojas, from the Netflix TV, uh, Netflix show Diablero, from Texas Rising, Narcos Mexico, and La Carga, among many other things. You, you've been around for a while, man. You, yeah, you started I like, when you were 12, I, I mean, you are very young. Yeah, I'm 40 years old, and you, you I graduated from school. You look, you look like schooler. 29. <laughs> yeah, I, ho I hope to not have 29 my knees my back they won't have 29 but not anymore when i get it's, drunk it's, i hope to have 29 because i don't want to be hangover <laughs> it's great to have you guys here and for for our american audience if you if you listen to a deaf very different accent is that we live in this magical place called mexico the land of yeah. tequilas and tacos <laughs> the utopia for tacos and tequilas so, yeah. so guys let, let's jump into the conversation i mean uh, we're here because we have uh, recently published in our creator on imprint uh, virus a comic book called uh, Mundo Diablo that's based that one, that one. and that's Horacio. That's Horacio. You, you've been lifting weights, man. Before COVID. <laughs> if you can talk a little bit about, be, before talking about this particular book, What's the origin of, of Mundo Diablo, Diablero, and go back to the 90s. Yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, Ricardo, for such an introduction. Our pleasure. I'm pleasure. flattered. <laughs> and of course, it was amazing, like, uh, being so inclusive with people of other planets. I think, I think yeah. when, when people see the, this conversation, hopefully, on the future, all, all going to be, like, very awe, oh, like, oh, my God, this, these guys are so ahead to, to their time, you know? <laughs> And, and and that's amazing. <laughs> they already have they already have fans in, in out of Earth. Yeah, or or or, the, or our peyote was was very good. Peyote <laughs> <and> mushrooms. <laughs> oh my God, uh, uh, Ricardo, behave, please. <laughs> this is heavy metal. We can talk about anything. About anything. Ah, anything. <laughs> cool. Well, um, Mundo Diablo. It's a a, a magical. Uh, it's a magical realism uh, work. Um, the the first comic uh, appeared in probably the mid of 90s with 1994, 1994. 1994 with Edgar Clement uh, the the original artist who create all these uh, all these um, mythical epic and noir uh, universe you know like with all these creatures like angels and demons and owls which I think it's it's like very cool thing to work with when you are a writer or, or I'll, I'll, I'll writer. interrupt you there. And Nawales or Nawals are, are this this guy Edgar Clement, whom we publish in this in this magazine. I was a little bit prepared. His first work for heavy metal, Edgar Clement. This is a Frank Frazetta cover. This this is sold out, guys, so mm -hmm. so sorry, but I think there's copies with another cover. We publish him. His universe is based on, on, on a thing that, that resonates a lot of Mex in Mexico. I mean, the clash of cultures. I mean, angels combined with local mythology, Aztec or Maya mythology. That's what Omero is referring to. Nahuales uh, are like witches that transform into animals, something like that. I think, but, I think the, the term will be shapeshifters, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but it's not like the shapeshifters that, that uh, Nordic uh, werewolves or something like that. It's, it's, it's very oh, different. Cool. It's, yeah, yeah. But, but please go on. Sorry. No, no, that, that's okay. It's like a, it's like a, you know, like a magical process for these nahuals, for these uh, local witches. If if you can see, like uh, Jarena, if, if you can, you know, say art. words just to see the the art. Okay. That, that's the yeah. original art of of Edgar. His first work was Operación Bolívar, which combined angels, demons. 
the problem about cartels in Mexico, uh, the United States government and in its relation to the Mexican government. We, you, you, everybody that is listening to us knows that we have a complicated relationship, love-hated relationship, our two countries, two great countries. Uh, and that's, that's the start of, 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 of Edgar's work. And, and then what happened? Well, uh, after that, it was like a, a huge thing here in Mexico because you are combining like the magical realism, which is a, a, a very folklore thing here in Mexico with this new wave of uh, graphic novel. So it was like a huge hit. So uh, after that, uh, Hagenbeck, uh, 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 a colleague of, of mine, uh, developed this new project called Diablero, you know, El Diablo Me Obligó, which was a, a very huge uh, book here in Mexico and focus on the other branch of the, uh, of the lore of uh, Operación Bolívar, which was the Diableros. All the it was a people. very huge book worldwide, man. I mean, it has been translated like to eight, 12 languages. His writer, Francisco Hagenbeck, uh, uh, I think it has been, that, that particular book has been translated into a lot of, of languages. So it was, it's very cool. Like, I think now he's the second most, tra most translated prose writer in Mexican history. So. Was yeah, and, and I mean, I mean, the, the, the story is so good, man. I, I, I mean, it's, it's so good. If you write, if you are a good, a good uh, reader, you, you will purchase like uh, Operación yeah, Bolívar and El Diablo Me Obligó and Diablero and all this stuff. And it's a very good thing because it develops a very organic uh, relation between the Judeo-Christian mythology with uh, these crime and, and crook stories for the, you know, the, the police on the mid 90s, mid 80s, and uh, all these uh, narco thing going on in Mexico. And so it's a very, it's a very huge and very nice product. So when I met Francisco, probably two years ago, it was like a, like a, a very uh, open minded uh, conversation between us, because we were like, I think this, it will be better if we can translate to a graphic novel, not just a, a TV show or, or just the books, but I think it will, it will work better with, with sequence, you know, because that's the genesis of the project, uh, Operación Bolívar. So Elvis Infante, this amazing character, this amazing Diablero, it's a, it's a very good asset to, to work with, not only in the graphic novel, but on the TV. Uh, it, it, was, it was a very attractive thing to work. So I think this effort and other projects that will come uh, after this, they're just the result of this uh, amazing relation between the mythological thing and the, the, uh, this historic thing going on in Mexico. So it was a pleasure for me to develop it. So, so, so it was a graphic novel, then it was a prose book, then this is where Horacio comes into scene. After being a prose book, it became a Netflix show. Can you can you talk us a little bit about that? How did you get involved in the project? What is it? Well, I, I my process to be part of the of the show it's like a regular process for any actor. So I made casting and then they choose me, and I was the Elvis in Panda. But the first thing that I made with when they call me for the casting is to uh, get into the web and looking for Francisco Hagenbeck and for El Diablo Me Obligó. So I read the, the novel first before the casting and what Amero says is like it, I, I, I feel a lot of power in the words of, of Francisco and he opens a, a window for a new world in Mexico because I, I don't know why but in Mexico we never speak about these Mexican things in the media no there's just a few shows where I spoke about the, the power of our ancestors and the power of our ancestor culture. And when I read the novel, the novel uh, it says in East LA. So Elvis Infante, the original Elvis Infante, he came from East LA. So it's more like a Mexican American dude. Like he has both cultures, the American culture and the Mexican culture. When Netflix decides to do this show, they decide to change and translate everything for, to Mexico City and made that this guy, this demon hunter, to be more 
uh, uh, direct relation with the antiques and the old cultures in Mexico. So that's a new thing, and that's the difference between the book and the the, the show. So for me, it's I was really happy because it's a, for me it's the first time, like in modern times, like a big company decide to put their money in science and fantasy fiction in Mexico. And we know that we, that we realize that it's, we have a whole world there with a bunch of possibilities because the culture in Mexico is so huge and it's, they have a lot of soul, you know? So this guy, like, it's a guy from the hood, but it's a dumb, a drunk, a dancer, a nice guy, but at the same time, it's a guy who has a real connection with his past, and he's he's really proud of the, of, of be who, who who he is. And when we do the the show, we we know we realize that they have a lot of fans around the world because the people are outside Mexico City. They can see what we can see. They can see that we have a great culture and like a, a culture that every country wants to have it. No. And, and as Amaro says, it's like a, a, a whole world to work with, it's just comic, novel, shows, movie, future films, uh, graphic novel. And even now we're playing a little bit with small videos on YouTube. So characters like this, histories like that, like this, they open a new world for America Latina. So we hope now that not just Netflix, the Amazon, Hulu, Disney Plus, they do something with our culture. Now, for example, Crunchyroll. Heavy metal, heavy metal. He heavy movies. metal, yeah. <laughs> heavy metal with movies. And now Crunchyroll has this show from uh, Mayan culture, Onyx Equinox, because our culture, it has a lot of potential for the media. So I think it's the future for us and it's the future for people that we get involved in this geek freaky world but we love to have more chances to be part of projects like this. I, I got to add something there. I was thinking that with, since the 80s, 90s with globalization, the cool thing, we speak about Mexico because of course we live in Mexico, we're Mexicans, we love our country. But for example, I'm pretty sure that, that you, you both are, are movie and TV lovers, that when you find a show about African culture uh, uh, or, or, or Indonesia or something, that's so different for, for from us. But when we start, well, it happens to be like I'm, I'm looking at this, at trying to think about the script, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we're in this business of, in, in entertainment. Like, there's a lot of things that are the same problems that we have in Mexico. A guy from Russia, a guy from Texas, a guy from New York has. And so, if we focus uh, not on our differences, but what makes us like human beings it's very cool because I, I do like globalization <laughs> i do like i don't like having uh, internet all, all over the world and in mars but i also like that this kind of projects are like a living museum of of things that still exist i mean not demons or angels but but my <laughs> culture and uh, our pyramids the pyramids in egypt the, the great wall in china whatever i mean it's very cool because what we don't want to have is a monolithic culture. I'm pretty sure that a lot of big business wants that, but we don't want that because that's that's um, opposed to crea creativity. We, we like to embrace chaos because for me, cultures are chaos. Our culture, our culture, I mean, the clash of, of the Spanish or the European culture in general and the, the indigenous people was brutal. I mean, we can romanticize it, but it was a brutal clash of cultures. Uh, that gave us extremely bad things and extremely good things, and it happened all over the world. Yeah. Um, and being yeah, very specific, I got a question. I got a specific question for you, Horacio. How was the casting of this character? Because for 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 people that haven't watched the show, Elvis Infante is a badass character, but a badass character with a good heart. Yes. Right? Yeah, he's not a typical, stereotypical Mexican guy that knows how to fight and... and, and He's a, a, a guy that that uh, demon hunter, but he in that in the since the first episode, if I remember correctly, he showed that he has a good heart. He cares for his family, for his relatives, and even for people that he doesn't know. 
Let us know. And yeah. he has to do bad things to for the greater good a, a lot of time. Uh, but 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 how was the casting for this project, specifically for this project? Actually, I need to say I think maybe for me in my career is the most simple casting that I'd ever have. Why? When I received the script and and I read it and. I realized that something like Elvis Infante and I have like a good connection. So I try to be a badass outside, but I, I'm, I'm a good guy in my family with my people and I have a good soul, I think. And Elvis Infante has a really fun guy. So I was shooting Narcos when I made a casting for, for Diablero. And I didn't have a lot of time to study. But I try, I want to try, I want to do it really good. But when I read the script and when I read the, the novel from uh, Francisco Hagenbeck, I said, okay, this character, it's like me. I think it, I could be a demon hunter. I want to be a demon hunter. So I, I took one decision. So I learned the lines. I uh, learned the atmosphere of the sequence that they want to read for, for the, for the character. But I took one decision. It's, I'm gonna I'm gonna say it through me, to who I am, to give it to give to Elvis my skin, my voice, and everything who I am. And when I did that, the director told me um, one month after that, he told me the first uh, the, the first time that I see your video, when I saw your video from the from your tape, I said it's, it's this guy. It's this guy, but but it's not the character. It's you. You are the guy. You are Elvis Infante. And, and it's something that they said, they always said that uh, the character should choose his actor. And I felt that the character choose me as, an, as a, a demon hunter. And why? Because maybe I grew up with uh, movies like uh, uh, Gremlins, Lost Boys, <laughs> Goonies, Cruel, Labyrinth, Dark, Dark Crystal, Evil Dead, uh, Hellraiser. All that movie, I I grew up with those movies, so I I was part of the of what I want to to tell with this with this story of the demon hunter. When I read the the book of of, of uh, Paco, I realized like I could be this guy in SLA too. When when I I remember that I I bought again the Operación Bolivar, and I said I could be those, those guys too. <laughs> I I belong to this universe, you know. So it was. Everything flew, uh, flew you? Yeah. Uh, um, flow? I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> lost in translation. Just correctly, man. <laughs> well, just every, everything, correctly. Every, 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 everything flow there, and, and, and it was really uh, fun to me. And I think I enjoy a lot that casting, and that's why I, 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 I was Elvis in Panda, because I enjoy it a lot, and I enjoy to be that guy. And... It's a character that you need to enjoy to be because it's a really light character. And at the same time, it's the first time that a main show in Mexico has a dark skin or brown skin actor as a main character. So for me, it's, I'm really proud of that because if you are Mexican or Latino you, and you turn on the TV right now, you're going to see that the, uh, all the shows the main characters are white or more from Mexico. Europe. He's talking about Mexico. In Mexico. Guys. Yeah, in Mexico and, and, and a lot of places in Latin America too. Yeah. So they, they want to portray as if, if we are a part of Europe in our skin. So it's the first time that a big show for the main, main, main company of, of, uh, of media, they choose a brown skin actor to portray the main character of that show. And Elvis Infante, it must be really Mexican. And it must to look like a Mexican because he belongs to the hoods, but he's a smart guy. But at the same time, it's a guy who, who is really proud to, to be who, who, to be a Mexican. And they took the, the, the director, uh, Jose Manuel Cravioto and showrunner, they took one really important decision for me. He decided that Elvis Infante and his family, they're going to speak, they're going to spoke in Nahuatl. What is Nahuatl? Nahuatl is like one of the uh, main original language in Mexico country. It's the, it's the language of the Aztec Empire, of the Mexicas. So they decided they're going to speak in Nahuatl. For me, it's like a, a blessing because we have the opportunity to, to, 
here in Nahuatl in 180 uh, countries in the world and in Mars. Mars, in Venus. <laughs> yeah, a couple of things. Horacio is not making this up. I, as, I, as you were talking, man, I remember when we met last year at the local convention. I was not that drunk. I remember that we met. <laughs> uh, and you talk, I asked you a question about how actors adopt mannerisms and, and different ways of moving. Uh, that, that always has fascinated me. That I saw you, uh, 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 but, and you move a little bit like Elvis Infante. You told me, that in this case, I, I Horacio, led a lot of my of of who I am My to this soul. character, you told me that 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 was the first the first you were signing. Sorry about interrupting your your signing. <laughs> uh, you were you were signing the, the Mundo Diablo. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Met, uh, um, but no, but that, uh, the conventions of coming is that that's one of the reasons we met people from around the world. To we are involved in the same world and we love the same thing. Yeah, we, the, and there's, there's, there's a lot of geek culture right now that's geek and proud. Uh, so, so my next question for both of you, because Horacio touched a, a very sensitive and important thing about representation of media, comic books, movies, TV. Uh, of, obviously, this was not conscious. I mean, Hagen, Hagenbeck is, is quite blonde, but he's, he's Mexican. I mean, but um, I think it's very important. I was we had a we had a we had a, a chat a couple of weeks ago with one of my fellow college and editors, uh, Joe Illich, very good editor. I, I, I teach him that he's the editor at Heavy Metal that knows what he's doing, not like me, like I'm always <laughs> playing by ear. Uh, we were talking about representation. He's, he's an African-American. And one of the, I, I was telling him that one of the best and most hopeful stories that I've heard in the last year, three, four years, is one that the little guy called his, his parent, an African-American boy, that Black Panther, the movie Black Panther, the Marvel mm -hmm. movie, was yeah. the first time he saw a character in a, in, a, in, a, in a production like that that was that looked like him and was not a guy. And he's a uh, hero. Yeah, he's a hero. He's a, he's a king, man. He, he was not a drug dealer or something. Do you think it, it, is, it is the time and place, not just in the United States, everywhere, even for us, even, even for uh, showing our, uh, for example, we are all mestizos. I mean, we have, we have two, cultures in our, two, two cultures in our man and two at least two different, Black. I don't want to say races, but type of genes, and, uh, indigenous and Spaniard genes. But it's also a time for Mexico, for Mexican media to show Southeast Mexico and a, a, a Maya production. So it's not about thinking globally. Do you think this is the time? And if uh, for representation and how can, can something like, like Mundo Diablo or Diablero help in this regard? Omero, if it's your turn, Homero. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, definitely. I think uh, here in Mexico, we have different voices, different colors, different uh, cultures inside of the same uh, country. For example, uh, myself, I have a Jewish heritage uh, from the north of, of Mexico. There's also a lot of, of uh, uh, I don't know, of, uh, Aztec roots and, and stuff like that that became part of our tradition. So I think it, it's time to develop projects that tell that kind of stories because that's what it is. We, we are living stories trying to share the things that happen to us. So Mundo Diablo and Diablero and all this universe, it's like a very good shot to, to try that and to achieve it because yes, we know all the stories of the white man and the Spanish conqueror. And that's the way that Mundo Diablo start uh, the, the story at the beginning, uh, the Spanish conquerors came with their angels and their gods, but there was also these these characters, these nawals that changed themselves from uh, human to animal to animal, and uh, they they tried to resist the adopt the adoctrination. And I think that's a very actual topic. It's a very contemporary subject that that we need to discuss. So if you are in uh, America or you are in here in Europe or you are in South America, these kind of topics, this kind of subjects, there's something that we need to discuss like right now, like today. So it's a very good opportunity to do that. Mo movie and TV can them. also do that. Oh, to show that. them. Yeah, I, I think it's, 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 it's a good opportunity, but I, I think there's a lot of, uh, of, of 
the people in Mexico, the people who take the decision in Mexico, they resist to the change. They don't want to change. Most of them, not all, not all the people, but a lot of them, they, they want to continue the same way that they, they do for years because it, it's how they know, it's the way that they know to make uh, shows, movies, comics, and everything. But for example, for me, it's, it's really uh, 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 like a, I don't know, I don't want to say weird, but it's really, uh, como se dice? Uh, it, well, it, 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 it's really strong that all the time the big projects who spoke or their touch our culture, the main idea came from another country. For example, Apocalypto, uh, Coco, even Diablero, the, 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 the company who produced the show, it's a com company from Spain. They, they bought the rights of the book because they read the book and they said, okay, here we have a great story to tell. And they bring the story to Mexico City with Netflix. But the main idea of the big projects to spoke about our culture, they came from another place, but not in Mexico, not from Mexico. Yeah, Why, for, for, I don't for, know. For I don't know because I met a lot of people that they have a good stories about our culture, but when they, sit in front of the people of a big chair who take the decision they said no i want a narco story i want a a, a comedy from a people from really upper class and or if i want if i want another kind of story it must be the story of the guy who lives in the street you know like i don't know why but i think now the media is changing a lot and the people is embracing our culture so I think it's time to ourselves embrace our culture and make like these things, like connect with people that everybody wants the same. We want to put there more stories about our culture because it's fun. And, and yeah. at the same time, and at the same time, it's, uh, it's, it's our future to be, uh, to feel proud of, of who, we, who, are, who we are. Everywhere in the world should feel proud uh, of who they are because I think colonialism has has left us big scars all over the world uh, that that trying to reject original cultures, not just in Latin America, all over the world. Because I, I was I was listening to your colleague Horacio, um, I forget Tenoch, 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 Tenoch. He was saying something that is for me it's terrifying that Mexican actors in Mexico mainly cannot access what you just said, uh, that brown skin guys are always seen as the antagonist, as the evil guy, as the homeless guy, never, never as the, as the hero, never as the good guy. And I, I, um, this, for Romero and for me, that we have this advantage that we can create with just a notebook and a, and a pen. I mean, that was like, like really, really terrifying because, uh, I, I think it, it, it happens all over Latin America. I think it happens in the United States, and it's sad. I mean, it, it's it's kind of sad, and uh, we are thankful for these kinds of projects that show. It, first of all, they're fun projects. It is fun. I mean, it's a, we are in the entertainment business. But then that after the, after the, after all the laughs, after all that, that the fun, there's something that that that, that can be learned from these kind of projects. Uh, for example, I, I was telling precisely Joseph that I, I Spider-Man for me is a lot of the other of, of tacos because my mom that the first Spider-Man I read the first Spider-Man I read by myself I was going to uh, I don't know what second second grade or something like that and my mom stopped the car and bought some tortillas. I mean, you, uh, uh, for our American audience, tortillas. And they're wrapped, and they're wrapped in the... Yeah, the rata tortillas is called in Mexico. I don't know if in the States. It's, I mean, Southern States, I, I mean, I think so. Tortilleria, where they sell tortillas. A place where you go and buy just tortillas and this particular, particular smell. So every time, for years, I'm, I'm not kidding, for years, when I read a comic book, it reminded me of tortillas and then of tacos. I mean, very stereotypical, okay. but, but very cool. But then I related to Spider-Man at that time. Because he had a more or less, I, I was younger, but the same problems that I had when I was a teenager. Uh, and so 
it's very cool. The shy because, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The shy guy uh, that was mm -hmm. uh, that want to talk with women and 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 can't at that time. Um, and and as I grew older, uh, I read a lot of different comic books, not just superheroes. The first comic book, I don't know if, if you guys, I think you have read this one, Sandman 50. Sandman 50 of Neil, Neil Gaiman. Yeah, come uh, on. Sandman issue 50, it's, uh, it talks about dreams. And th that was the first comic book that my wife, who at that time didn't speak English, so I had to translate. I mean, we were reading it together. I saw, like, like she was shocked to, to find this comic book that talked about hair, I mean, in the, in the sense of dreams the and dreams. dreaming about, uh, uh, but it was so so weird for her because comics were always like like Archie or at that time uh, uh, she liked this character Strawberry something I mean uh, Rosita Fresita in Spanish Strawberry uh, Strawberry I don't know no, Strawberry Shortcake yeah there were some comics in Mexico but but then she discovered she discovered heavy metal to me and and it's very cool when you, when you hand for example me and when I'm the, at the heavy metal booth in, in Mexico City when people discover the magazine and discover different stories, different cultures, different ways of, of seeing the world. It's very cool when the next day, I'm sure it happened to you, Homero, the next day they come yeah. and they buy more and they start like, like this. We live in a difficult country right now. We accept that. I mean, it, it's a difficult time everywhere in the world, but in Mexico, no, the world so is the a difficult the place. Violence, uh, but these kinds of escapes, from that, that comic books gives us, that movie and TV gives us. It's very enjoyable to see when 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 people enjoy what what this the stories. For example, virus, virus that the imprint where, yeah. where your comic is published was created. The slogan is if I, I am just for 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 saying is stories bring us together. I mean because since since the dawn of times, stories caveman. I'm pretty sure that caveman also talk about heavy metal and Diablero, the first caveman. <laughs> and 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 so 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 this is very cool. But I, I'm deviating because but, I had a lot yeah, yeah, sorry. Sorry. No, you say something that it's it, it's really important. The people they must understand that the comic uh, industry it's a reflex of, of our uh, popular life, you know? And as you said, if if one small African-American guy in the States watch the movie or read the comic of Black Panther and then he can see himself through that character as a hero, as a king of the big and powerful country, Wakanda. That they're not anymore the people in the jail. It's not anymore the drug dealer. So you change the chief of that little guy. Yeah. Your state of mind. And, and in Mexico, the media, the, the heroes for the media in most of the cases are the drug dealers because you turn on the TV and you can watch not just one, you can watch like a 10, five, 15 shows about a drug dealer as a hero. Yeah. So they don't want to change that chip, you know? And I, I, I can, I can speak, speak, speak about my, uh, my experience. A lot of people write, wrote, uh, write me in my uh, social media in, in, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and they, they tell me like, oh, I'm look like you and you're the hero. I'm look like you and you're the good guy, but you don't need to be like a Superman, like a good guy like this, no? I need to be good, I need to be good, I need to be good. No, it's a good guy who likes dance, who drink a beer, who, it's a, it's a fun guy, but at the same time, it's a hero. When, when he needs to act as a hero, he's a hero. And the people connect with that. And the people want to be a, a hero like you because everybody has a hero in, in, in ourselves, you know? But that's how we need to change uh, our, perspec our perspective for, for ourselves, you know? But in the States, they really understand that. And that's why the comic industry, they portray a lot of heroes, different kind of heroes, the girl, the gay, the African America, the Latino, and now with uh, Miles Morales, I think all the kids that love Spider Man, they're gonna say, "Okay, a guy from Puerto Rico is the new Spider Man," and and they look into the mirror and they say, "And he looks like me, so I could be like the Spider Man. Yeah. I could be the hero here." So it's it's a good way to change our perspective, and and it's a good way not just to change the perspective, no no not just as a social 
thing. It's a real entertainment industry. The, the, the Mexican culture has a lot of possibilities. Can you imagine a Sandman, but with uh, Tezcatlipoca, Quetzalcoatl, Huichilopochtli, Tlaloc. That's the gods. <laughs> they are the gods the in the world of the dreams, in the, in, in the world of the, of, of the fantastic world. It could be fantastic because the look of those guys, it's really cool. The mask that they use, Tlaloc, Tlaloc use a really beautiful mask. And the heaven of Tlaloc, like, is it Tlalocan, like it's the heaven from, from Tlaloc, it's full of trees and birds and wild animals, like the world, I mean, how was the world like uh, centuries ago? You know, as an image, it's really powerful, that image of those heroes of that culture. I'm going to give a shout out to both Heavy Metal's CEO, Matt Mednick, and, and Heavy Metal's publisher, David Erwin, Horacio is going to write a comic book about Mexican fantasy culture. Yes, I can. Well, <laughs> uh, here's Homero. He, he can help me a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, 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 Omero, but Omero is cooking a, a, a lot of things. And, and, and he's, he's okay, becoming he, a rock star too fast. He's too busy yeah, becoming mean? a rock star too fast. So you sure, know what sure. happens. We have, we have, I mean, <laughs> no, I, I remember, it's like... Again, Omero. I want to be your friend again. <laughs> we're, we're friends. We're friends. Just, 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 just. Come on. I mean, uh, all, the, all the writers always try to get things done inside of their mind before everything goes, you know, like to the paper. Um, I, I, I'll try to quote uh, Ricardo. Uh, all the Mexicans are like really badass with a very good heart. That's the case of Elvis Infante. That's the case of Horacio. That's the case of most of the Mexicans because we have like a really tough life here in Mexico with a, a lot of advantages and a lot of tough situations. But um, at the end of, uh, at the bottom line, we're, we're all badass with, with good hearts. Um, I don't know, it, 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 it's kind of remember me like, uh, reminds me when I was like a teenager and I met heavy metal for the first time. Uh, I'm 31 years old. I probably met the magazine when I was probably 17 or 18. And I do remember when I, when I saw that magazine, the first thing that came to my mind, to my mind was like, I, this, this could be a chance for me. I'm, I'm seeing myself writing for, for this publication, for this magazine. Uh, and I didn't back off with that thing for the next 10 years. I mean, I was a middle-class Mexican with a very broken English, and it was like a real aspiration for me. Like, I can do this, I can achieve this. So that's the kind of uh, opportunity that heavy metal gives. And that's the kind of opportunity that all the entertainment in the States uh, should, should bring to the, to the to the to the people you know like all the artistic community and all the other writers because the latin american writers have like a lot of, of different stories to to share yeah i i agree i agree uh, i remember when you when we first talked about, about about heavy metal you, you were you were a teenager i remember <laughs> you remember that it, yeah, it was like, a magical time right, right now we're just a, a couple of old farts <laughs> Old, just old. <laughs> uh, but you bring a great point. I mean, heavy metal has all been beast. That if we could describe heavy metal with a word, it's possibilities. And, and yeah. we are very glad that, 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 that there's this combination of different voices. Because right now, is, is the old, not all, the classic guys, like Liberatore from Italy, France. Oof, new, yeah. new guys, new Latin American guys, European guys. Uh, Movie, movie and TV guys, uh, we now have Horacio, we have, uh, not we have, we are collaborating with, with Dylan Sprouse, with, with Dan Fogler. I don't want to be, I don't want to <laughs> be in the amazing. Me Too oh, movement. So, so, uh, so do you think there's possibilities of more projects like this, Horacio? I hope. Because, I hope. Yeah, I, I, let, let me, let me interrupt you because I, I mean, for, for our audiences that, that haven't seen that, the, the the show and they haven't read the comic. Horacio appears in the comic. If you could, if you, I don't have it at hand. If you could show this, this, your face. I mean, Horacio is in the comic. He's a comic book character, man. 
with, along with Samuel L. Jackson. That, there, look at I'm that. there, I'm there. Look at that. Look, I think I'm of you. There. You're there. It's so handsome. Yeah. That was one of the, of my first questions, but I forgot how how do you how you were you approached? Because I know that many many actors don't like their likenesses. For every print, who cooperated with this idea that you should be in the comic? I can hear you. What? Uh, who approached you with this idea that you your your appearance should be in the comic? Or it was you that? They, they didn't tell me. They just. <laughs> oh, okay. This is Mexico. We don't tell anyone. We just <laughs> That's... get things done, mister. <laughs> but, but I think they know. They knew really well that I'm going to be happy. Obviously, the first time when I read the comic, when I, I received the comic from uh, Paco Hagenbeck's hands, and I read it, and I open the first page, and I see say, okay, this oh, is fuck, my this face. Is me. This is, I was so fucking happy. Because I dream all my life with that. As a matter of fact, I grew up too with reading comics. I grew up with heavy metal, Fangoria, all, all these kind of magazines and all these guys, the, the comic books and, and all these movies and all these shows. So one of my biggest dreams is to be, to have a, a action figure and a comic book. So I have a comic book. I have a, a fan made action figure, but I hope in the future I'm going to, be an action an action figure from NECA or, or toys or something like that. We are open to it, man. If you get, if, if you can get the rights, I'm pretty sure that Heavy Metal will be interested. We have, we have a, 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 now our main character. Arna. Since three or four years ago, we are producing uh, uh, figures because yeah, Heavy something. Metal was just the magazine. Now it's a... Uh, uh, um, Publishing house and uh, that we generate IP. We also publish a, a creator own comics as always. But there's a lot of, of of cool things happening at Heavy Metal. Some that have been announced. Some that I have to keep quiet unless unless you bring a cool tequila, a good tequila. That's when I start <laughs> talking. You know, you know me. <laughs> uh, but, but 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 it was very cool. It was very cool that 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 that, that you achieved this so young, Horacio. I mean, you yeah, and, I'm really happy. And now I have a really, I'm really happy to meet people like you, like Homero, because we can build bridges to, to, to do more things like that in Mexico. Because maybe through a big magazine with, with a lot of uh, respect in the industry, like heavy metal, we can make things in Mexico, like open the mind of those who doesn't want to put the money in projects like this. Because they think that, okay, no, that's comic industry. That's just for kids. Uh, you're, as, as Disney, as Disney is it just for kids. As Disney, they don't have, they don't receive a lot of money from the comic industry, you know? And they need to open their minds because there's a lot of money here and there's a lot of fun too. And at the same time, it's a good way to uh, re-educate the people from Latin America and from the world because the states, they use the comic books to educate a lot of the people, you know, the war, and they bring characters like Captain America to feel proud to be American, you no? Know? And there's a lot of cultures there. And so there's a big opportunity. So I hope Heavy Metal, Omero, I, and a lot of crazy people around this universe, they're going to put bridges to build a new Tenochtitlan, you know, like the Tenochtitlan is a city in the middle of nowhere, and they build bridges to connect with the world. So we can do was that. The, the Aztec capital, that was one of the greatest cities in the world at that time when London was just small. But yeah, just, so, just, just yeah. interrupt. We are not saying that we are not, not, we don't want to fall into this thing that we, we are very, as you guys have seen, heard, we, we're very proud of our culture. But what we strive for is that exactly what we're actually saying, build bridges among every culture in the world, not walls, bridges among any, any culture in the world. And if this kind of talk can help a guy in Vietnam to feel proud of their culture, yes. uh, that would be cool. Uh, uh, yeah, because, we, at the, and at the same time, if, if we made it, if we can to tell more stories about our culture, maybe people in Peru, they want to put money to tell stories about the Inca. And maybe it's going to happen the same in Indonesia and in Africa to tell their own their own stories because they say, okay, the people in Mexico, they do, they do uh, projects with their own culture. 
and they make a lot of money. That's what they say the people who just want money. Yeah. And why don't we, let's put the money too in our own culture too, you know? Let, that's the best way to, be, to, build, to build bridges and, and, and to connect with the people around the world. Because for example, projects as Diablero. Diablero, it could be a show that it could connect with any country because stories of demons and angels, it happens in any country in the world. So we dream a lot of to have a Diablero in Korea or in Vietnam that yeah. Every Infante is in his house, uh, drinking a beer, and listening to some music, and then receive a call. And he picks up the cell phone and says, yes, okay. It, it's something, it's someone in Vietnam. They, they have a job for us in there. <laughs> and they fly to Vietnam, and there has a whole story there, you know? That's the way that our industry could build bridges to other cultures, because I don't know is, all the all, all the anti cultures they connect in some in some in some way uh, uh, around the world. Exactly, and this is the time to do it. I mean, I mean, and this is the time that movies and comics are so related right now. So it's the time to Omero, your next project, please. It will be it will be a comic book in Mars. I mean, with Martians. <laughs> Horacio is going to be the main character. He's going to be the prime minister of Mars, and it's going to be a war against aliens that come from the outer outer parts of our solar system but <laughs> you have this first the people, I'm the totally people for, from earth are going to be our friends or enemies <laughs> uh, i don't know omer is going to write he has to write he has to earn his money so <laughs> yeah, yeah. so the, we have the, been, we have been going for 50 yeah, uh, omer we have been going for 50 minutes so if you want to add something like before we go um, I, I don't know. I, I think this is like a very nice conversation with very good subjects. Uh, it's, it's more than obvious that we, as an artist, our, our, our main job is to tear down walls to become bridges. So these bridges, it's the solution for uh, uh, a communication issue that we have, you know, like for one uh, uh, country to another, from one culture to another. So I think that if we are willing to read different stories for different cultures, for different countries, uh, the world will be a little bit more, a, a better place to live. So let's do that. Cool, man, cool. Uh, uh, what are you working on? I mean, there, there's going to be more Mundo Diablo comics? Uh, definitely. Uh, we're, we're talking right now with Heavy Metal just to see the, the kind of options that we have. You know, like we are like a, a very, uh, I don't know, a very small uh, independent press, but with a lot of, of chance and opportunity to do a lot. So uh, you, should be, you should be ready for a little bit more adventures of Elvis Infante. That's, that's cool. That's, that's right. very cool, man. Horacio, is there a project you want to mention? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to have a really fun project for Amazon Prime, and it's going to be a zombie project. Okay, but cool. the, the good thing of this project, uh, the one, one, one of the main characters is a zombie, and I'm gonna be that character. That so, has been announced, that, that, that has already been announced, yeah. They're announced like uh, six months ago, and they're gonna change the name of the show. Their original name is Narcos versus Zombies. We want to change the name. I, I don't know if they're gonna change because we believe that the show they need to have another name. But it's really fun because it's it's like uh and somehow it's 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 looked like Diablero, you know, like the co uh, comedy, black comedy without a lot of action and maybe more gore. So it's it's fit perfect for the people who love heavy metal. Maybe they're gonna love this show. But I'll tell you that the one of the main characters is the zombies, so that's super cool. The zombies they're they're not just like Duke there. <laughs> it's no, another no, thing you can it, scratch from your bucket list. Yeah, and it's really fun. And it's really fun. I, I spent more than four hours on the makeup chair, but but the result is fantastic. So the makeup of the character and the look of the character is gonna be fantastic. Maybe we could do a comic book too. Of course, we, we already have, uh, uh, you gave me this opportunity uh, uh, the, the, with jo George Romero, the son of the legendary director, mm -hmm. he was also a director. He's doing a couple of, of zombie comics for us. One, one is a, 
I don't know if it's a prequel per se, but something to do with the rise of the living dead, the rise. And the other one is called Dead War. That, that's our, our, our heavy metals own zombie that was featuring in that movie. That, that are listening. Next, next year is your show, right? Next year is... Um, I, I, think, I think, yeah. The original plan, it, 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 they're going to launch this year, but the COVID situation, I think they're going to push for the next year. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend four things. Buy heavy metal short stories of, of zombie, zombie. Yeah. buy the, the comic book, the uh, Cold Dead War, buy, uh, watch Horacio's new show, and drink Iron Maiden's beer, because we also publish Iron Maiden comics. <laughs> it's not a zombie per se, but, <laughs> but everything, everything, you're speaking about money, I do like money. <laughs> we all like money, but we will build bridges but using stop drinking when you look like Eddie. So, sorry? <laughs> if at some point you look like Eddie, stop drinking, please. Okay, stop drinking. Yeah, I'm drinking this. I'm going to, this is, this is very, very. Yes, no, with the hierro. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is very, very local. I mean, from Northeastern Mexico. It's You're from Veracruz. Hierro, it's iron, iron. Yeah, it's from Tampico. I, I, yeah, it's from Tampico, ah, Mexico, from Tampico. Northeastern, yeah, 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 Northeastern yeah, yeah. Mexico. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry in Tampico, the university. I was part of the what? Okay. Autonomous yeah. Tamaulipas. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah, we are all connected. So, so guys, it was a pleasure to have you here. Kobe is not that that the the last time. Uh, we are going to talk about us. We're going to, to to do something together with Omero. We're in talks about things that we cannot talk yet. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't. Uh, you guys are rock stars. So so, and you and we we know that you your time is limited. So we appreciate you. We we have been here for an hour. Yeah, and, so, and we could and we be can, man, another, and we could be here another now an hour or two. Let let's do something. Let's do something. Not 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 in the next one. Like let's do something. I've been thinking about like bringing creators from all over the world. The only requisite is that they speak. That will be amazing, from, man. From Argentina, from France. Yeah. Let's, let's do let's do a big talk. Creators obviously that are related to heavy metal in some way. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. It's <laughs> like it will be a very cool thing, like to have Argentinian or. And yeah, people and from guys, Chile, it, yeah. it will be like a very nice talk there. Uh, uh, from, from from Europe also, and, and, and let's discuss these things. I, I, I'm pretty sure we are going to have a lot of similar things that we that we dream of, that we hope for, uh, and and also a lot of differences, and that's cool. I mean, differences yeah. are very very cool. That's what yeah, makes that, us humans. So so that's why that's why we like to watch different things around the world because we like to learn through a movie, through a comic, through a show. Uh, we want to learn from about from other culture, you know? And it's really boring to be uh, uh, equal, to be yeah, like the same, all the same, you know? Yeah. No, the, the, all the yeah. same, we want colorful, we want different flavors, we want different textures, we want uh, the difference, it's really important and, and it's the heart of the, of the human being, you know? And uh, I think to do things like that, to, to call people from around the world that we we love the same subject is the best way to 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 build bridges again and now we know that through the covid that these kind of conversations are really easy we're we're learning to use the internet in a good way now finally yeah. finally 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 finally, people. finally. Yeah. yeah because it's internet cats and board are cool but there's a lot of things around the world that we can. Yeah, definitely. we can we can learn about using the internet. So just just a quick thing, Ed, where they can follow, where our readers can follow you, Omero. A couple of your social. Oh yeah, all my social media is the Omero Rios. So that's my name. Please. The Omero Rios me. in English. D H E. Yeah. The Omero Rios. The Omero Rios. But also, is there a place where fans can? Yeah, and on Instagram it's. Horacio under dash Garcia under dash Rojas and Twitter Horacio GR69, the best number ever. <laughs> and, and on Facebook, Horacio Garcia Rojas. Yeah, guys, thank you so much. And of course, big people know heymetal.com and there's hey metal, all the social social media. So it was a pleasure to have you here, guys. Let's keep talking about Definitely. projects and about beer. <laughs> thank and you about very rock much. music Hello. and comics. Thank you very much. And please, uh, people, get uh, Mundo Diablo from the Virus Catalog. It's, it's already there. 
So please get a copy and tell tell us what heavymetal you think. Com, the virus, the, the virus heavy metal dot com. Heavy metal dot com. Thank you guys. Oh, thank you.